Hello, welcome to uh, the Parasoft SOA test and virtualized demonstration. Um, I'm going to generate some test cases and have them point to a virtual server in this demo. Uh, we're going to use some um, WSDLs which define the traffic and the contract of the API that we'll be testing. So the first thing we're going to do here inside Parasoft, I have a workspace open. Um, I can show you that we have a SOA test perspective and a virtualized perspective. We'll start with SOA test. We're going to generate some traffic. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new test file inside a test asset. This just means I can give it a name, so demo test is fine. Now we can see the type of test that we're going to try and create here. We support RESTful protocols, SOA, a lot of other types, including TIBCO, which is very common, and other enterprise service buses. Um, we can do web based, um, and we can generate traffic and interpret that traffic to generate test cases. We're going to use a WSDL in this case. So at this stage, um, we're going to enter the WSDL in here, we can browse to it on our file system. This is an address resolution service, a typical API for testing. Create functional tests from this WSDL now. So at this stage we've been asked, do we want to create an environment source? What this means is that we can extrapolate out the configuration for where the endpoint is that we're going to test against. This is going to become useful later on when we toggle between a virtual service and the real application under test. And now, and we're going to generate tests automatically, sort them alphabetically. Okay. So the tools interpreted that WSDL and it's produced a test suite. And there's an address resolution port. And inside that WSDL there were two operations, the resolve account operation and the resolve alias. For the purposes of the demonstration, we'll look at this resolve account operation. So here's the uh, XML that will be produced. We can look at this as a literal XML, a form input, a form XML. These are just different ways for us to examine the traffic that which will be generated by SOA test. The literal right now looks like that. So inside the form input, we can see each element contains a value. We can see the transport of this operation, i.e. the endpoint and where it's going to hit. It's defined as an endpoint variable here. This variable was set when we created our environment file. So we can have a look at that environment file right now. There's the endpoint. Now, it read this from the WSDL itself. So it's going to test against production right now. Now, we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to test against a virtualized server while we create our test cases. So I'm going to switch perspectives over to the Parasoft virtualized perspective here. Uh, we can close those down. Now I'm going to create a new virtual asset. And this virtual asset, I can give it a name. And again, we support all these various protocols, very similar to the SOA test uh, request generation. We're going to generate a response. We're going to use a whistle as before, and we're going to use the same whistle that we used before. Okay, so the tool has read that WSDL and produced some responders, and these things generate our response when we execute requests against them. Our address resolution port here, uh, there's always a fault response generated, uh, resolve account and resolve alias. So for the operation resolve account, this is the configuration of our responder. And we can see inside our virtualized server here, we have a local machine and a virtual asset by default has created this demo asset. I'll just start up this server. There's an internal Tomcat instance inside Parasoft which will now um, be executed and blow up that web archive so that we now have a responder suite. I can open that up and we can see that on this address, localhost colon 9080, we are serving a responder um, for this operation and we are now ready to execute tests against that. 
I'll just copy that into the clipboard and I'll return to the Parasoft SOA test perspective. So inside our environment file we have an endpoint and I can change that now to be the virtualized endpoint. Just save that. So now that our request generator is pointing at our virtual service which is up and running we can now execute it. Just press play there. So we can see that so traffic has been generated, it's empty traffic pretty much right now in a request, and it's going to this uh, location, which is running on my local Tomcat. It sent this XML, and the response was this XML. That's not hugely valuable right now, but we can prove that we've generated traffic. At this stage, we might want to start writing tests. So, at the request stage, um, we can right-click on our generation of a request message. Generate CSV data source. What this is going to do is create a CSV file and we can put it inside our workspace. And that CSV file is going to contain all the data that we should map to each of these elements inside the request. So you can see when I pressed OK there, a data source appeared and it's called account resolution request data by default. And inside each of these, we've now got a parameterized variable, instructing agent, creation date, time, message identification, and so on. Now we can see inside the data source, CSV here. I'm going to show the columns of that CSV, which has been automatically generated. The columns map to each of the element names. We can actually open up that CSV. And it opens in Excel by default, and we can see we've got a single test case. So if I say instructing agent 1, message identification 1, identification 1, and so on, and then I can copy that and paste it. And now I've got two test cases, and so on. And I can extend that as far as I want to a thousand test cases, whatever I choose. Now if I execute this test, it's run those three rows, and you can see the three of three test cases succeeded. We can look at the traffic for that. The traffic now has three rows, and you can see the first one there, this is the, what was generated in the request, 1-1 one, one, and there's the date, and then the second one, 2-1 one, and the date, so that follows from the CSV. So we've now got a loop of all the tests which get run against that responder. At this stage we might choose to enhance the responder so that it acts more like the real API under test. So the way we can do that is by including some logic into the response. We can change the request status to see successful. We can see this meta message identification could equal the word demo. We can save that now. Upon saving, the server is redeployed and we're ready to test again. So back over to the test case and we can run it. The tests again succeed, but you can see inside the traffic viewer that the response that we've received contains the word demo and the value of success for that last element. From this stage, you can enrich the virtual service even further. Now, we still haven't got any assertions in place right now. So I can add a, what they call an output inside so a test. And we can say let's assert that the response we receive from our test case contains a certain value. So we're going to say the XML which we receive, um, we want to assert upon it. I'll just briefly show you all of the various types of output capturings that we can go here. We can capture variables for use in later tests and values to pass through, there's string manipulation, there's data generation. We can query a database to access a data source, an Excel spreadsheet. There's all sorts of different ways we can do things here, as you might expect. This XML asserter. So we have an assertion on this. We're going to check the value assertion. You can see inside here we've got lots of different ways that we can assert. We have numeric, and we have regular expression, we have some Boolean logic, um, we have 
using a difference engine to say if these two numbers we can compare them a range of dates and numbers we're going to choose just a simple value assertion so if we say that the request status that we've received from our responder has to be a certain value, that's a fair enough assertion. So let's say we are asserting that the element that comes back um, for the request status is equal to successful as UCC. We can save that. So now we have a test in place. We can execute that test again. And we have three out of three succeeded. If I was to jump back to my virtual servers and change the responder suite so that my request status now says fail, and I shall save that, we see the uh, deployment happens again and the virtual service is updated with that logic. We can respond, uh, we can return back to our test, execute it, and you'll see that we have zero of three tests succeeded. And the reason being is that our assertions failed expected a success but now we have a fail. So you can see how we might be able to create some test cases. Now that assertion there um, is pretty simple. You might want to remove that because it isn't adding so much value. But what we might want to do here though is create a regression control. This means that we assert that all of the responses that come back from our virtual asset will remain static. We're going to create that uh, regression control single control and it's internal. So our diff control here, it says that the response we get needs to include this data. If we run the test right now, we have three, three successes. If we return back to our virtual service and change that response to say succeed, toggling it back again, we'll save that. Now if we run the tests, you can see we have three failures once more, and those three failures are because of our regression control. Our regression control expected fail and got succeed in this particular element path. I can open that up. You can see the diff. On that element, we expected the value fail and we got succeed. That's because I just changed the virtual asset. If I was to right click on this, we can ignore that X path, which means I'm now saying I don't care what that element has inside of it. So I have the option to apply it recursively. At this stage, I just want to say the text inside there, it should be modifiable, and I'm happy with that. I say OK. And now if we run the test once more, you can see we have three of three succeeded tests. So it's this fashion by which you can create the tests prior to having a real endpoint to test against. And that's one of the main use cases for using SOA tests and virtualized together. Thank you for listening.